Top and tail editing, or head and tail editing, as some people might call it, is really one of the fastest ways to edit. It's my preferred way to edit, in fact. But here in DaVinci Resolve, by default, it's a little bit convoluted, a little bit complicated. So in this video, we're going to set up top and tail editing uh, to make it much faster. We're gonna customize our keyboard and go through exactly what top and tail editing is. All right, let's look at top and tail editing here in DaVinci Resolve. You know, top and tail editing is one of the fastest ways to edit, but the default shortcuts here in DaVinci Resolve don't really make much sense. Come up here to trim, come down to ripple, and what most people think of uh, when they think of top and tail is cutting out either the head or the tail of a clip and everything rippling down. So the standard control, if you don't wanna modify anything, which we're gonna do in a minute, if you don't wanna modify anything, the standard control is control, shift, and left or right bracket. That's command, shift, left or right bracket on, uh, on Mac. So what exactly does that do? Let's come to this clip, and let's say I want everything cut out of this clip, but on this side of the playhead, so the top. In that case, I would hold control, shift, and left bracket, and it cuts out everything on the top, and did you see those other clips all shuffle down? And tail editing is the same thing. So let me take my playhead here, so the tail is anything on this side of my playhead. Control, shift, the other bracket, it cuts that out and everything else ripples down, okay? But of course, control, shift in our brackets, that's way too cumbersome. So let's go ahead and modify that, okay? Head up here to DaVinci Resolve and Keyboard Customization. If you have a keyboard, call it up right here. If you don't, just to start here on DaVinci Resolve. We're gonna move this to Q and W, although you might wanna put them on E and R, it's really up to you. Click on Q. Now Q already has something assigned to it, no big deal, let's, uh, let's uh, just move it. Source Timeline Viewer. Now you're probably never gonna use this, but uh, just in case you do, we'll switch this over to the tilde key. So just click on Q right here and press the tilde key. Go ahead and assign that. The reason why we have this uh, icon is because something else is already assigned to tilde. So let's go ahead and click tilde and the uh, the problem is we have this undo and this. So the click on undo, head over here and just get rid of the tilde because I never use that for undo. I use control Z, command Z on Mac. Most people use that. So we don't really need uh, two undo buttons, right? The next thing we want to do is click on W. This is dynamic trim mode by default. Uh, you can actually access dynamic trim mode just by clicking on the icon. So I don't need a shortcut. I don't really use dynamic trim mode that much. So I don't want to accidentally, uh, accidentally enter into it. So click on dynamic trim mode and remove the shortcut. Cool. So now we have two free keys. Click on your Q, head over here to your search and just type start, okay? Expand ripple and this is the shortcut that we want right here. So just click on the shortcut and press Q. That's gonna switch it to Q, very good. Click on W, don't have anything in there now. Change this here uh, for your search. Change this to end. Come down to ripple, end to playhead, exactly what we want. You can remove this and then hit W. All right, we are good. So now you can save and name your keyboard if you need to or, or append the keyboard that you already have. I don't need to do this because I already have this keyboard set up right there. Okay, make sure you save and close. So now we have top and tail editing set up the way it's supposed to work, fast. So pull our playhead forward right about where he's gonna deadlift. I don't need the top part of this. All I have to do now is hit Q. Boom, gone. Everything else shuffles down, ripples down. Same thing for your tail edit. Say we don't need this uh, back part of the clip, the tail of the clip, just hit W and that is gone, okay? So that is your basic top and tail editing. What if I had audio underneath that, okay? We'll say these, these clips don't have audio on them and uh, we just throw the audio in later. You're, it's gonna act a bit different, right? So if we do a top edit hitting Q, watch what happens here, boom. So it ends up cutting uh, from this edit point to this edit, or actually to the playhead here from this edit point of the uh, video clip, right? Let me squeeze this down. If I hit uh, W now, then it cuts the audio down to the uh, playhead there. Everything else uh, shuffles down. Okay, now what if I just wanted to cut just this video clip? Well, in that case, I just select it and now I can hit W and only the video is cut. Same thing for Q, I could just only trim the top. So another thing I could do is just take off our auto track selector for that audio track. Now I hit Q and only the video is selected. 
Now that will really come in handy if you're doing something that is, you know, multiple layers high. For example, we have four different layers here, two video, two audio. If I don't want my audio, um, you know, affected, I could just turn off that right there and maybe even turn off this video layer and then do a W and it's just gonna cut this uh, gorilla clip and uh, roll that back using our tail edit. Most of the time you won't be messing with this, but if you're in some complicated sort of thing, you can uh, employ your uh, auto track selectors there. Now, if your video clips do have audio connected to them and therefore have the same edit points because they are the same length, of course, whenever you use top and tail editing, everything will stay in sync. So if I do a top edit here, everything stays in sync. Do a tail edit here, everything stays in sync, okay? Now, if I did a tail edit, say right here, where there is no edit here in the audio, do a tail edit and you can see what happens there. So if I wanted to, I could just hit B and add an edit right there or just use your razor tool and just uh, just add an edit in the same in the same place, just right there. And then you do that same tail edit and it cuts, of course, right up to the next edit point. So if you had something like, you know, video, for example, I just have an edit point there uh, in that clip as well on this video clip. Then I'll do a tail edit and you can see what happens there. So again, if you wanna keep this stuff in sync, you can just quickly add an edit. If you followed the how to add an edit with one key video, we could just hit B. That adds the edit across all of those clips at the same time, then we could cut like that. Or of course, you know, use, uh, use any of your track selectors over here. So if I didn't want to, uh, if I didn't want to cut any of that audio, let's just turn off that auto select. And then we can just use top and tail editing for just our, uh, just our video tracks. So now let's look at a couple other options that you do have, well, ones that I don't really use, but maybe they'll come in handy for some people. So come back up here to trim, and we have trim start and trim end. This is pretty much the same thing as top and tail, except there's no ripple. You also have resize start to playhead. Again, it's gonna be pretty much the same thing as your trim start and trim end. So let's look at what these do. The default is shift and left or right bracket. This is the top right here, so if I hit Q, you can see what happens, right? It, it uh, shuffles down. If instead I did shift and left bracket, then it does the same edit, except it doesn't ripple this down, right? It doesn't ripple everything down. It just does the, uh, does the cut. So it trims the start to the playhead, right? The start or the top right here, it trims it to the playhead. So I don't use that shortcut because it's, it's you know, just grab it and do that, in my opinion, okay? Same thing for uh, end to playhead. So if I wanna cut out this part here, again, shift and the other bracket, of course, I have this uh, selected there, so make sure nothing is selected. Shift and a right bracket, and then it cuts that and nothing shuffles down, okay? So if you like that, you like the way that works, head up here to DaVinci Resolve, keyboard customization, maybe put those on E and R, uh, just type in, um, you know, trim to start or something. You can find them, uh, find them right up here. Uh, trim end, trim start. You can add those to E and R, or something like that, or you know whatever you uh, whatever you prefer to uh, add them to, if you like the way that works. And by the way, just like we showed in the previous video, we can use our Q and W the same way we can use B, meaning we can use it while we are playing back. So, assuming you have some audio in there, perhaps I would take that off, of course, of uh, our uh, auto track selector, so that way it's not. Uh, being cut, but I could play back now and uh, just play back. Okay, and I could hit Q right there and it cuts it out as we're playing back. So if you wanna edit that way, you can do that. Uh, do that as well. Very good, so now it starts right at the, uh, at the deadlift. All right, so just some things to uh, to think about when you're using top and tail editing here in DaVinci Resolve. Again, head up here to trim, and you can see the other shortcuts for trim to start. And what I like to call the top and tail is over here in ripple, start to playhead. Q and W is where I like to put those on my keyboard here in the customization here in DaVinci Resolve. All right, so once again, that is using top and tail editing here in DaVinci Resolve.